So I'd like to welcome with me today, celebrity skin expert, Rachel Varga. Thank you, Rachel, for joining me on some of your parts podcast. Thanks so much for having me, Dr. Betsy Greenleaf. We've, uh, you know, you and I have known each other for quite some time now, and we've had so much fun collaborating. You were on my podcast. We were talking about the whole CBD trend and CBD and skincare. Do we love it? Do we not love it? We dug into the science of the different pathways because, you know, you of anyone were, you know, you're the first female urogynecologist in the USA. That's a big deal. And uh, yeah, I love I love the work that you do. So thanks for having me today. Well, I and I love the work that you do too because I have to say that it, though a lot of women they really they pay attention to their skin. I was one of those people who never really paid much attention until now that I'm getting older. And mm. then all of a sudden it's like, oh shit! Like all those years let's I should have been preserving let's, let's things. Like clean, Doctor Betsy. Come on here. <laughs> 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 you know, so now I'm like slathering things on and putting stuff on. And I'm like, you know, if they say that's going to keep my skin younger. I'm like doing it. So, you know, you have the you have a couple programs that you're go going on and you have a message that you're, you know, very passionate about with just not only just skincare, but wellness. Can you go into that for for us? Yeah. One of the things I just feel really passionate about talking about right now is how can we be radiant? And this is when I when I think of my career as a board certified aesthetic nurse specialist, I, I love helping people with the science of skincare and the tack of how do we get this treatment to get this result, for example, getting rid of red acne scars, brown spots, reducing pore size, promoting collagen. What I started to clue into were what my most vibrant and radiant patients are doing and these are women aged 60 to 90 and I was like whoa what's going on here because these people were coming to me for the first time in you know those those times in their lives and they'd never done any rejuvenation before but they were more beautiful than some of the younger girls and women that were coming to see me in their 20s 30s 40s so I was like okay they they have more photo damage they're older but they're just like knockouts what's going on here so then i just started to sort of attune to what they were doing it's like oh how are you looking after yourself in regards to your exercise and you know what do you do for your mind for your mental health for your, your you know body mind spirit energy what's going on there and i just started to dig into that and uh, what's really funny is that is actually what really started to light me up of course, learning about the science because I'm a huge science nerd. I love going to conferences and learning about the latest tech and writing academic articles myself. I'm actually in the process of writing one now and I wrote one last year I got an award on. And it's it, it's really fun, this field of regenerative medicine and anti-aging and all this because it, it, there's a lot of positivity around it. We can very much take ownership of how we are navigating this world how we interact with people, places, and things. We can make it a more beautiful experience just if we know how. So it's kind of like a combination, as you know, with you know, inter interviewing some of the most forward-thinking health experts out there on what everybody's doing from you know, genes to hormones to supplements to you know, laser therapies and all this stuff. But actually, the best stuff is the free stuff. That's really actually what I find cultivates radiance and can give the ability for a man or woman to step into a room and people be like, oh, what's going on there? What, I want to be around them. Why do I want to be around them? And all of this stuff, it's, it's a really cool thing to, uh, to, to see. You know, it, it's interesting because this kind of goes like along with my message is that we can't take one part by itself and just treat that part. You know, basically we are the, we are greater than the sum of all of our parts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're a person who's spending all this time on skincare, but you're not nourishing the other parts of your body, you're not going to get the results that you want. So what kind of things do you think people need to be doing other than, you know, washing their face, slapping things on, you know, what kind of, of, you know, activities or diet or what else could they be doing in their lives to make them the best that they can be? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would say my top skin tips, it's consistency. Uh, we just had Katie Moore, we are live in this um, recording as well. And Katie Moore, she's a self-proclaimed biohacker. She asked me the best questions. And we were talking recently in my summer skin camp, which is sort of like a group training program to help people get their skin looking amazing in six weeks. So just in time for summer. And then there's also winter skin camp for the winter, drier, colder months with that indoor heating. So it's all about being consistent. And she said, you know, are, is skin made in the kitchen like abs are made in the kitchen? And yeah, it's really that consistency of nourishing and feeding your skin, right? So, you know, it's time for me to take my supplements today. So I'll be taking, I won't take them live here, but I'll take them afterwards. <laughs> and then putting good skincare on, uh, doing things like dermal rolling. I have this really beautiful gold roller here. Look how stunning that is. So just, there's so much that we can do to promote collagen and, and you know, just give your skin what it wants, nutrient wise, through your skincare, through what you're eating, but also what you are exposing your body, mind, spirit and energy to. They actually all play into our cells and how things function and, and our hormones and, and what's going on there more profoundly than I think we realize at this point. I agree. And you know, there's so many little things like I found I'm one of the unfortunate they say that 75 to 85% of Americans are chronically dehydrated. And I am definitely like the poster child for that, even though I tell people drink more water, drink more water. And, you know, I noticed that when I had my neck surgery not too long ago, I purposely for healing, I was like, oh, I need to make sure I'm drinking enough water. And I was drinking more water than I've ever drank. And it was, you know, which was the normal amount I should have been drinking. I noticed that made such a difference in my skin. And my mm -hmm. husband's laughing at me all the time because like, I'd be complaining mm -hmm. about the age of skin. He's like, you need to drink more water. And I'd be like, all right, Mr. Know-it-all, thanks. <laughs> but but it, it, he was right. Like just the simple act of just making sure you're hydrated can make such a big difference in the quality of your skin. Oh, yeah, definitely. Hydration is key. So one of the things that I do is when I'm drinking coffee, yes. Uh, shameless plug. I love bulletproof coffee because <laughs> yeah, it doesn't too. make me jittery. It doesn't mm -hmm. dehydrate me. And because it's funny when I'm out and about, I sound super Canadian when I say out. I know. I don't really want whatever. I can't do anything about it. Um, I just, I get that like jittery. I just get that like dehydrated feel. And hydration is key. And while we're on the topic of, of hydration, make sure you're drinking out of glass. Yeah. And I highly recommend that you get a filtration system installed in your sink and not to depend on those filtration systems that, you know, have plastic everywhere. Yes, there's going to be some plastic tubing in those faucets that you can have installed, but those that's what I would go for. I would go for that as opposed to, say, like a fridge filter because... A lot of times people just don't end up changing those out. So clean, clean water. And what was really cool is I'm a bit of a nature babe. I live here on Vancouver Island and the way that I stay balanced again, when we're getting back to, you know, um, being radiant, some of the things that I absolutely have to do myself are ground outside of nature. I don't know about you, yeah. but things just seem to be getting crazier and crazier and I just have a, I'm very sensitive myself. I'm definitely what you would consider a very empathic person. And I have to just remove myself. It's in, and being, this is one of my tips for being radiant because when you are in places that make you feel good, whether it's doing an activity, say for example, my hubby's a pro athlete, he loves exercising. That's like his church, right? And for me, I, you know, I enjoy church, right? And I really enjoy getting in nature and communing with my friends and just having like really deep, beautiful conversations. So anyways, um, I recently went to one of my favorite places. It's Canada's gnarliest tree. And there's this beautiful stream in the park. And I was literally drinking the water. I've done it a couple of times and no beaver fever yet. So I think I'll survive. But just when you start to get used to drinking really good clean water and then you have like a, a lower quality water it's kind of like when you're used to really good coffee clean coffee is the mold stuff like that mm. and no pesticides no additives you and you get healthier 
your body will start to tell you, okay, that's good for me. That's not so good for me, just based on how you feel when you're initially ingesting it or being around it if we're talking about like media and music and movies and stuff like that. You know, and it's so important too, you were talking like not just the clean water, but clean eating yeah. because, you know, I always tell people, you know, sugar is probably the one of the worst things, but we know that sugar actually produces these byproducts that break up the collagen in your skin. And then mm -hmm. it actually causes these chemical changes in the skin and that can age you terribly. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Betsy, I just sent you a little private chat. So check that out. And then we're going to bring up a question from Katie here. Yeah, I, I love you, Katie. You're in LA. I hope you're doing okay. So the fat in the coffee slows down metabolism of caffeine in your bloodstream. Yeah, that's true. That's cool. why like when you make the bulletproof coffee, when you just not just the coffee, but you add in the ghee or the uh, or his the oils, it will actually slow down the metabolism. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's really yeah. Nice. All right. So what other things can you talk about that about how to be the best version of, of ourselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, people always we get caught up on, you know, how do we look our best? How do we make sure? I mean, I didn't feel like doing my hair today. I just threw it in the side braid. I'm hanging out with a good friend like you, right? Yeah. So we don't always have to put all of this effort into like perfect makeup every day, perfect hair every day. Give, your, give yourselves a break. So when we're talking about our best version of ourselves, I'm going to tell a story. I get Instagram DMs all the time that Rachel Varga official on Instagram, Facebook. Rachel, what is this celebrity done? What, tell me what you what they what you think they've had done to their faces. So I recently did a video with uh, Chloe Kardashian. It's just on my Rachel Varga YouTube channel, and I actually don't really like doing that stuff. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of tell you why, because it's funny. I'm really surprised that people still care what the Kardashians are doing to their faces every five minutes. And this is really important because we are in a time in the world where things are getting really heavy and really deep, but I also recognize that people want a little bit of distraction. So when I do these celebrity plastic surgery videos, you'll notice that, you know, I'm not picking on the person. I'm simply talking about what I've had what I think that they've had done in regards to rejuvenation treatments, which I understand is very interesting for you guys. But for me to do it, it actually seems like really shallow. <laughs> Just so you know that about me. It's like, oh, why is she talking about the Kardashians? That's why it's because you guys want it. So in regards to being our best version of ourself, you will honestly take the best selfie that you possibly can when, for example, you are in a place that makes you feel good when you're doing something that makes you feel good and those ones those ones are the best like the non-curated ones you just get that look in your eyes you got that shine in your eyes just your whole like essence and being the other day i was at just this incredible um you know i live on vancouver island so i have access to these majestic forests and we we're going over this bridge oh my gosh it was like dizzying how high it was we're literally at the top of the trees here and we look down and there's just these beautiful waterfalls. And I, I snapped a really beautiful photo of uh, one of my besties and I. And, you know, we're just in the backwoods, dust all over us from all the, the dirt. And, and, you know, we look awesome because we're in our element. We're just having a good time. That's really key. So, so if you're, you know, looking to cover up all these things on your skin, like red spots, brown spots, Find all these gadgets to promote collagen. Do this other stuff first. It's free. But I mean, absolutely. When we're talking about some of my favorite skin tips, I have a really sweet download you guys can get at rachelvarga.ca. It's if you sign up for my newsletter, you will get a version of my treatment planning guide, which is just like tick, tick, tick. How do you itemize different treatments to get done? Timing, all that cool stuff. It's like a little day planner for your in-clinic stuff. And then the sophisticated skin cheat sheet, which is basically my five steps that I think everybody should be doing. And, and I, I kind of expand on it in that download, but just great resources. That's really where you want to start. And then also making sure that things are customized. So with some of your conversations, Dr. Betsy Green Greenleaf, I would uh, say that you are also noticing the same thing, that it's all about going into aging 
using a highly customized approach. What are your thoughts on that? No, I definitely think, I think, you know, we all, you know, because everybody's different in that you can't do things cookbook. So everybody really needs their own plan and what makes them feel good. You know, what, you know, people eat different foods and react different to different foods, you know, you know, not every skincare product is going to be great for everybody. So I think that definitely, you know, having something that's customized to work the best for you is, is the way to go. You mm -hmm. know, I was thinking about your idea with the selfie. And I'm like, that's a really interesting way to actually look and just to demonstrate to yourself the effect of kind of your inner beliefs and your your attitudes and, and emotions on radiance. Because if you take a selfie and just like, you could try it out a couple of things. Just take a selfie and then just kind of like think about being bored and see what your face looks. Like take a selfie and think about being like the saddest moment in your life and see what your face looks like. And then take, think about like the happiest moment in your life and take a selfie and you will see the drastic change going through those emotions, how they can basically are, are portrayed in our behavior, in our facial expressions. So, you know, trying to build a more vibrant life and being more in that, that here now mindfulness and, and happiness area can just do so much for your, your body and your skin. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. And uh, getting back into the topic of um, customizing our approach to aging, this is really where things are going. It's not about just, I really want you guys to just become smarter consumers and really, uh, paving the way here for something called conscious beauty. And you guys watching this, like you guys are in the right place. You guys are on the right track. You're working with us. So that's perfect. You, you guys are, are there. But a lot of people are still just, you know, looking at what the celebrities are doing and trying to take that selfie and be like, <laughs> I mean, they look like ridiculous. And they get their faces done. So they just look like they're cartoons. And then you see them in real life. You're like, whoa, something's weird there, right? <laughs> I see it all the time. It's like, no, you do not want to have a Korean facelift if you're Caucasian. Trust me, I've seen it. And this is like, this is the trend right now with like that caricature look. And, you know, do you? Seriously? Yeah. Like, how many women have you seen that you can tell that they take pride in looking after themselves, but they haven't overdone it? And then you see people that have overdone it. What would you say the differences in are? in those types of, of individuals? I'm just curious. I mean, I think, you know, definitely the person who's just themselves is probably the most, you know, beautiful person on the face of the earth is that, that inner confidence, you know, someone who's overdone and they look plastic and they got the duck lips, like it just looks so fake. And I know they think they yeah. look good, but it it's so awkward. And, and it almost makes me uncomfortable to see them like that because it, it makes me almost feel like sorry for somebody that's that's doing that because it's like what inside of you are you not fulfilling that you're doing all this stuff to look so plastic Barbie it's the why yeah it's getting to the why of it yeah. we had a really interesting uh, comment here from a male listener I need tips on how to not hate seeing myself. I mean, this applies mm -hmm. to both men and women. I avoid both cameras and mirrors when possible. I feel like the 40s have hit me hard. This is what I hear a lot of with men. Like I said before, I work with a lot of male celebrities. When they hit 40, they're, they're meeting with me. Constantly feel ugly as a guy. I've never even thought of myself positively or negatively. Any tip is appreciated. Well, thank you so much, Colin, for just being very vulnerable with us yes. and sharing this. Because this is something that, you know, the fact that you've just said this is something that's weighing on your mind and you've probably been looking for a place to, to share this and get some guidance on this. So what I could suggest is, you know, book a session with me at rachelvarga.ca. I'm happy to dive into this further with you and give you some actual at-home and in-clinic strategies to, to really improve the health of your skin. But, you know, men, just as much as women, we want to, you know, we want to look as good as we feel, right? And the man that left that comment there, he's probably 
you know, relatively fit guy looks after himself. And I see this a lot of men in their forties. It's just like, boom, aging, low brow, puffy lower eye bags, brown spots, like the sag, right? They just don't like look as good as they feel. So this isn't just like a women's thing. This is, you know, any human. Sure. And okay, now we're going to get a little deep. This is the juicy stuff. This is what I love talking about. So I want you guys to find a mirror and you can listen to this while you're doing this exercise. I want you to just find a mirror nearby and just look at yourself. Like how often do we just look at ourselves in the mirror? And so look at your right eye. Just look at how beautiful your right eye looks. Notice the color of your eye and then look at your left eye and you know maybe that left eye looks very different what what's the feeling that you get when you look at yourself in the mirror and then just look at yourself and just think of one thing that you are so proud of that you know that your your family your your loved ones that they love about you one really beautiful caring conscious quality that you have and I want you to focus on that and just really keep your mind at a place where it's positive self-talk. No one can take away your freedom in respects to how you think in your mind. This is very, very important for you to give yourself that positive self-talk and not feel self-conscious to look at yourself in the mirror. There's always something in the mirror that you can appreciate whether it's you know your cheeks or the color of your eyes or your hair or your jawline or your smile or your lips or or something or maybe you have this really cool scar that you got doing something fun like for example i broke my finger playing football and i kept playing and i could look at it and think oh my finger is a bit jammed up and messed up it's not perfect who cares i had fun right it's just Make sure that when you're looking at yourself in the mirror, you're giving yourself those positive comments. And if you're reading articles or you're on social media and you're just feeling inadequate or that fear of missing out, you know, FOMO, just take yourself away from that. Like last night and today I was on social media. I'm like, I feel like the world is just getting it more chaotic, you know, if we didn't think it was chaotic a couple months ago, I think it's just going to continue to move in that direction. So now more than ever, we need to be doing things that light us up, looking at yourself in the mirror and appreciating yourself. Uh, you might not be able to get those compliments from other people around you, or you might not want to ask about them. But there's always something about you. Say there's a skill that you have that you're really good at. Say, for example, you can build something or you can figure something out like technological wise or, you know, you can garden or or anything or you know how to fix stuff. Like, I mean, that's pretty cool. Focus on that. Right. Do more of that. Focus on the things that light you up and bring you joy and make that a priority. And if putting a skincare cream on your face makes you feel good taking supplements that make you feel good, do it, prioritize that. You don't have to explain yourself to anybody. But you know, I think you, I mean, when you're looking in the mirror, just make yourself smile because there are chemical changes that actually happen in your body from a smile. Even if you don't feel like smiling, if you smile, not you will actually produce hormones that will make you feel happy. And if you see yourself smiling, that's even a stronger reaction that you're going to get in the body. You know, I've even tried to tell my kids, like when they talk to each other, they they say words, but they, they, the tone of voice is not good. There's a lot of negativity. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, guys, I want you to try saying the same thing and say it's smiling. And you can't even, if you smile and try to say like the worst curse in the world, you can't even say it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, it's interesting because Botox didn't get approved for this, but a few years back, they tried to get approval for treatment of depression. Mm -hmm. And I'm I like, remember. okay, how is Botox going to treat depression? Well, they found out accidentally that people that were getting Botox for their frown lines, because they couldn't physically frown, they actually reported being happier. And so I say a much cheaper way is just force yourself to smile. And that's, you know, that's like 
Rachel's been talking about, do the things that are free. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of us were from various different economical backgrounds. I work with a lot of men and women who are retired and they're on a pension. So they just need to be really laser focused with what they're doing to look after their skin. And I really like the idea of really looking at what facial muscle motions you are doing and noticing the mood that that uh, is correlated with that. So, I mean, we've got a doctor in the house, right? So let's uh, bring a little science to this. So why don't uh, Dr. Betsy Greenlee, if you tell us a little bit about hormones and how they can make us feel so much better. So I think, you know, one of the things you, you think about is first, we're going to go probably into the ones that make you feel bad is that before everything that's been going on with coronavirus, just in general, our life is so fast paced. And because it's fast paced, we make a lot of hormones of stress. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the past, those hormones were meant to save us because, you know, if a saber tooth tiger was walking down the street, we wouldn't want to be like, oh, hi, kitty, kitty, because we'd be dead. So those hormones kick in for us to like fight, flight or freeze to get the hell out of there away from that cyber, saber tooth tiger. Well, now the problem is so that's supposed to be a quick quick release of those hormones, then you go back to your baseline. Mm -hmm. But in today's life, we're under financial pressure, we're under work pressure. Now we're under, you know, pressure from quarantine or coronavirus or, you know, whatever else is going on in the world. And those hormones are staying elevated. And, you know, it's something that it happens without us realizing it. And those hormones raise cortisol and cortisol affects your aging terribly. Oh yeah. It affects your immunity, it affects your skin, it affects your aging, it decreases your muscles, you know, it decreases it increases fat in the body. So we need to now consciously find the things that light you up, that make you happy because those things are going to basically by putting yourself in a happier state, whether it's through mindfulness or meditation or saying positive things about yourself because that actually can change you what's called neuroplasticity it changes mm -hmm. your your neurologic pathway so that the more positive things you say about the better connections in your brain to where you really start to believe it and it becomes you so doing those things not only will increase your health but your radiance and will like we said goes back to like the things that light you up and mm -hmm. it affects your hormones in so many different ways because those stress hormones take away from our sex hormones. So, you know, we go down to like lowers your testosterone, lowers your estrogen, you know, lowers your sex drive, lowers, you know, muscle mass. So, you know, we need to be doing things that really just kind of create happiness in our lives. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about EMFs for a second here because I feel like a completely different person when I am two hours out of any cell reception. My body actually craves this every week from me to go where nobody is. I mean, obviously I'm not gonna go by myself. And I saw two bears actually on, what was that? What was that Saturday? I saw two bears. This is where I live, right? And there's nobody around. You're just in this forest and there's actually a tree on one of my walks that you could go into. And it was as the, the opening was like as tall as I was, I could stand there and I was just cocooned by this tree. And it was the weirdest feeling. It was like, oh, that's what nothing feels like, right? Because we're so used to just having all these signals bombarding us. And when you take yourself away from that, and get out in nature where nobody is around when you're safely able to do so and allowed to do so for your own safety. Don't get me started on that. Why the provincial parks were opened a week after the malls were opened. I do not understand this because yeah. it's so key. So here I am with one of my best friends. We're in the middle of nowhere, two hours from cell reception. There is not a sound around you except the rustling of the trees, the birds, I mean, every now and again, let's just be real here. We'd hear, we'd hear some breathing or growling or like squawks from the forest. And that's either going to be a bear or a cougar. I mean, this is just a fact of where I live, but it's the excitement of it, right? It's so much fun. Okay, Glenn, it's time to go. <laughs> we don't want to wait to find out what this is. 
but it's just stuff like that. That's what lights me up being in nature, um, exploring and not being around any of this EMF stuff. And it's crazy when you really start to notice how different you feel. It's like, I feel like this is how we're supposed to feel as humans. Just this like nothingness, right? None of these other distractions of these artificial noises of cars and airplanes and sirens and all this stuff. Like you guys really just get back to basics. It's that stuff is free and it's the best stuff. <laughs> I remember somebody told me once that their practice was to just go out every day and like walk barefoot in the grass. And so I actually tried that recently once it got warm enough here. And I was like, wow, my kids, we, we just dug a, a, a butterfly garden and they were like, Aww. can we walk in the mud before we put any of the plants in? And I was like, sure. and they were like walking and playing in the mud and like, Years ago, I probably, as a mom, I'd be like, oh, don't get dirty, don't get dirty. But they, they really have found that we need that dirt. We need that dirt microbiome to, like, to that bacteria yeah. to be on our skin and in our lives to keep us healthy. And that we're, we're so, at this point, we're so, like, we're like the Purell nation. We're, like, putting hand sanitizer yeah. on everything where we really need to be exposed to the things in nature to be healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So if you guys don't yet know about grounding, oh my gosh, yeah. just practice can change your life. So you can do grounding in a number of different ways. Grounding is actually something that I actually need to do in order to survive and function and get in my creative space and just really like sort of like mute the other stuff in the world that don't matter, right? I mean, like the Kardashians, let's just be real here. It's just get off your social media, get off all that stuff. It doesn't matter. There are things that you can do with your loved ones, with your community around you to help make the world a better place. Why should we be dumping all of our mental energy and capacity to getting caught up in the world when we can't do anything about it anyways? There are things that we can do that you actually don't need to leave your home for, right? It's like what you put your mental attention to, praying, things like that. Uh, I have so many friends in LA and I'm actually really quite worried about them right now. And one of them I haven't heard back from. So, and she's right in like Squid Row, right downtown. And I haven't heard from her. I'm like, I really hope she's okay. So nothing I can do. So I'm just gonna pray for her and just get out in nature and just, remove yourself sometimes just take a little bit of time to remove yourself and ground so you can ground in many different ways whether it's taking epsom salt bath i have himalayan salts as my night light so i don't get that blue light at the end of the day i love that taking mm. your shoes off um, putting your feet on the ground to really just get that exchange of ions because we can really build up i believe we can build up protons uh too many positive ions in our body and it creates havoc because our bodies are full of electrical gradients. And if that gets off, it's going to obviously even mess up our hormones, which impacts our aging and our well-being. And so, so if you're feeling a little like wound up and frazzled, you got to do some of these grounding exercises, yoga, qigong, reading, taking that bath, putting that relaxing music on, like I love listening to music at, uh, what is it? 432 Hertz, 432 Hertz. Love that. Um, you know, if you can, if you have like a, a type of mentor that you work with or a counselor, or a psychologist, doing check-ins with them every now and again is a really great idea as well. Um, it's funny, the things that should light you up should really support your body, mind, spirit, energy practices as well and your mental health. I agree. I think those are all such wonderful suggestions. I even, there's tons of different free and, or low cost apps for like mindfulness mm -hmm, or meditation. Mm -hmm, um, I do that. I listen to a lot of, cause I tried to meditate myself and I couldn't do it because I had this idea of how it was supposed to be. And it does, it just means sitting quietly. It doesn't have to be a certain way, but I like the guided meditations. And if you're like an Amazon prime person, you can get a lot of them free on your, your, the Amazon music. There's apps. I, I listen to a whole bunch of them. And with the EMFs, I switched from my wireless headphones 
to like the earphones I have in now. I won't use them. I actually won't use those Bluetooth headsets, even though I, like the media, they all want us to use them for interviews. I'm not like putting brainwaves between my head. <laughs> and I love these. I love these ones too because they're like they're um, the the speakers down in the bottom, and then there's yeah. a tube almost like a stethoscope. These are uh, Dr. McCullough's ones. Oh, cool! So I like I like these ones a lot. He's a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we had a chance to hang out with uh, Dr. Joe Mercola last summer. Um, yeah, really down like to earth. Yeah, and the network that um, Dr. Betsy Greenleaf and I are connected to are just, you know, people wanting to share great, helpful information. Just just a, a sidebar, there's so much information that I want to share with people. But a couple of months ago, I started to. And then for some reason, I wasn't able to then link my website in mm -hmm. any of my social posts. Because mm -hmm. I mean, this was like right before uh, the virus happened as well and like increased censorship then too. So if you, cause I, I was doing a little audit of my social media. It's like, Oh, it's Kardashian thing. It's like, it drives me crazy, but you guys asked for it. So there you go. But it's like that stuff. Oh, I just, Oh, okay. We had a, a little question here. I've been struggling so much with the news and I've been thinking about doing a social media detox. What are you? Oh girl. Yeah. Oh, yes, I have. I honestly, I haven't even been on my social media at least two weeks now and I haven't even checked the news in two weeks and I can't tell you how much better my mood is you know because if something's really happening in the world you'll know about it like mm -hmm. you, we're not completely like away, like because somebody in your social network whether it's a family member or friend they're gonna call you and tell you if something major is going on so you yeah. know I had this fear that I was missing out and I was like checking the phone every and we're saying checking the phone before going to bed at night and that blue light will actually affect your melatonin production and affect your sleep cycle so yeah, yeah. yeah. I swear by my red light in the morning and evening just like that signal okay it's time to just like right uh, okay, so social media detox, Katie Moore is in Summer Skin Camp with me because we're um, also going live for this recording. And what have I done? The last two live sessions, Saturday morning in Summer Skin Camp, you guys know this, I'm going out in the woods all day. I'm not coming back home until eight or nine at night. And I'm going about two to three hours into the bush where there's no cell reception. There's bears and cougars. I saw two of them within 20 minutes last weekend. But that's how I do it. I, I turn the phone off as well. So there's no EMFs that way. And I find that I have to actually for my sanity. And then I come back home and it's almost like I'm blissed out. It's like the state of bliss. When you are in these places where there's no reception or EMFs, it's just crazy it feels very foreign and I, it's just worth sharing that, you know, that's how I'm feeling. You know, I think too, I saw a study not too long ago about um, increased risks of depression with actively being on social media, because unfortunately we're human. It's natural for us to compare ourselves, you know, and to, to kind of model ourselves after what we see. Well, you know, unfortunately, there can be a lot of negativity out there, especially on the social media. And that can really start affecting your mood, which and then can affect your life and your health and your wellness and your immunity. So I think that the least amount of time that you spend on in social media, the, the better. I mean, if you go on it from time to time as entertainment, but if it really, if you pay attention, if you know it's affecting your mood, then it's not good. You know, I, and just in general, like with my kids being homeschooled right now, like we've, they get done with their school work so fast. And then they have all these hours to fill. I'm like, be a kid, go outside. Like I've instituted no electronics, no tablet, no TV, no computers. Just get outside and be a kid. Yeah. Yeah. It's so it's a bit of a dichotomy. So I feel a little bit torn between this. Yeah. So I'm checking in with my mom. I'm saying, hey, mom, I'm going into the woods. This is the trail I'm going to be on. If you don't yeah. hear from me by 8 or 9 o'clock, you know, send the recovery team. Yeah. You do yeah. have to think about these things when you go to the places where I go. You got to tell people where you're going to be. So if you need uh, if you need some help getting out of there, they know where you are because there's no reception. It's not like, oh, got a flat tire. Yeah. Can you give me a lift? There's nobody around, right? 
so then when I get home, she's like, oh, by the way, did you know that SpaceX launched the first commercial aircraft, manned aircraft? It's like, things are just getting weirder. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? This happened today, like during this? And then there's all these riots. It's like, so I want to do my due diligence and like catch up and see what's going on. But is that actually helpful for me? I would yeah. say no. Like, but yes, we want to know what's going on. So we're up to speed with current events. And for me, I'd much rather have wonderful conversations with leading health experts like yourself, Dr. Betsy Green, the first board certified Euro gynecologist in the USA. Like that is a big freaking deal. I'd rather have these kind of conversations and learn about how we can promote health within ourselves and with others. And then we learn at the same time. And we're getting this almost like healing download when we tune into the Some of Your Parts podcast, which is your podcast and my podcast, the Rachel Varga podcast, right? It's, it's, uh, there are really good forms of social media out there. And then there's just the scrolling and you feel like you got to catch up and that's just kind of like my personal internal struggle. And I, I think it's about time that we just sort of like start showing up in our true self. Not that like, let's be authentic, right? JJ Virgin, I interviewed her on the podcast. And she said, I can't, I don't understand why people say, you know, just be authentic. It's like you will be your most authentic self. I like to use the word truest. When you are balanced with your body, mind, spirit, energy, you're doing things that light you up. You know, you are becoming your greatest version you are going to be your most radiant version when you are in that space this has been this is really wonderful do you have any like final tips on what we need to do to like be our best or things that we haven't brought up so far well i mean we've been chatting for 40 minutes there's but i could go for hours i know that's <laughs> <laughs> lifetime worth of things that I would just love to share. I would just really encourage all of you guys listening to just take notice and inventory of things that you might be spending your time and attention on that just aren't constructive. They're just not doing anything positive for you. In fact, they're just wasting your time. And really start to pay attention to the love, your loved ones around you, your family, your loved ones. You know, the beautiful flowers, these orchids, by the way, have been going on like almost, I think, four months now. I can wow. usually kill orchids in like a week. So <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it's my red light therapy, but that's a whole other topic. But just do things that in general light you up. And when it comes to wanting to, you know, improve your health on different levels, we have Dr. Betsy Greenleaf here, first ever board certified female urogynecologist in the States. If you have any you know, sexual health, um, aging, pelvic health concerns, definitely follow, follow you. And then for me, I obviously talk about skin. And yeah, we're putting out tons of free stuff just to, to help you guys out, especially right now. This has been great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. We just had a, a final question come in here from Katie Moore. Thank you both for such great advice on this. I'm inspired to be a creator instead of a consumer on social media right now. Yeah. But at the same token, I mean, I was having this struggle yesterday too. It's like, do I want to post to like show people that I know what's going on too and like come up with this like photo of myself and create this like really witty description. <laughs> it's like, who cares? Who cares? Right. I'd rather do like a video or audio thing where you can actually really get some type of helpful information out of it. Um, yeah, this is a really fun conversation. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. And so where can people find you, Dr. Betsy Greenleaf? Oh, they can find me at drbetsygreenleaf.com and also some of your parts podcast and follow me on social media. And where can we find more information about you? Yep, uh, at Rachel Varga Official, Facebook, Instagram. I'm um, just search my name on YouTube. The Rachel Varga Podcast is like, that is one of my favorite things I'm doing. And if you have any questions in regards to at home or in clinic skin rejuvenation, just book a call with me, rachelvarga.ca, Summer Skin Camp's on now. I have a great ebook, but yeah, I'd say start with that one-on-one -on -one if you're like, oh, what should I really be doing? How do I customize what I'm doing so I stop wasting time and money? 
I've got you. Awesome. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day, guys.